Hello people, I'm Mr. Kazahu here. I've got another SFM tutorial for you guys, and it's one of a few, hopefully, that show you the procedures for certain things I do in Source Filmmaker. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I render with a flat color profile. Now, what is a flat color profile? Odds are a few of you might not know what I mean by flat color profile, so in its most basic description, a flat color profile refers to an image having a dimmer and more subdued look. A flatter look, if you will. This flatter look is favored for people who do photo editing, because it means that the image has extra headroom to play with color correction to bring back the natural color of the scene. To demonstrate what I mean, I'll use this picture I shot a while back of my cat who sadly passed away recently, and I shot it with a flat color profile. I want to also preface this by saying I am in no way an expert on any of this, so yeah. If I shot it without a flat color profile, it would look something like this. Everything's too bright, there's no detail in most of the white parts of his coat, and if I were to try and change the exposure and color correct it to fix that, that brick walling in the upper histogram range would prove problematic for that. With a flat color profile, however, that pushes all of the detail of the image into the middle of that histogram, meaning that there's all this space on either side to pull that back out and create something more balanced. Like this. Nothing is overexposed, colors pop, and the image as a whole looks much better than before. Now, of course, this same principle of using a flat color profile can be applied to Source Filmmaker posters and even animations. And in this video, I'll show you how I go about doing that. Let's begin. All right, with SFM open and a map loaded, we need a picture to render. Here's one. As we can see with this picture, everything is posed and the scene is lit. And if we set it to render now, this is how it's going to come out. But if we wanted some extra flexibility to adjust the color correction somewhat drastically later on, we would run into problems with the exposure of the artwork and the brightness of some of the lights as it is. And to help alleviate this, we're going to overlay a filter on the camera so that it dims the colors and dulls the image. And there's a few steps of this process. First, start in the clip editor and scroll down to the overlay row. This section contains any effects that change how the camera view looks and renders. Right click Effects and select Add Clip to Track. In the menu that pops up, select Engine Post Effect, then click OK. By default, it'll overexpose the scene and add a vignette and some subtle film grain, which we will change. Click and drag the end of the overlay clip to cover the entire working area on the timeline and rename it if you want to. Then right click the clip and select Show in Element Viewer. Here we can see the parameters for the overlay effect. Deselect the vignette and noise options to get rid of those respectively. You'll notice that even though we disabled the vignette, there's still what looks like a vignette on the screen, and that's due to these two numbers down here. Local contrast vignette start and end. Setting them both to two or higher will get rid of that extra vignette. Scroll down until you see the option TV gamma and enable it. This will limit the balance of the dark colors in the scene removing some of the overblown blacks that can cause lost detail in dark areas. This is also especially useful because the next thing we need to do is darken the image to reverse the overexposure caused by the overlay effect. Go to your camera and change tone map scale to 0.02. .02. That will darken the image, remove most of the bloom, and because of the TV gamma option being enabled, there are no areas of the image that clip the dark parts into absolute black. We could render now, but there's one thing left to add. When you render as a PNG image sequence, which is highly recommended even for animations, some compression happens which causes visual artifacts known as color banding. This usually happens when using volumetrics, but it's equally annoying here because we will need as much flexibility as possible to apply proper color correction to the image. There are two ways to deal with this. One of the ways is to render as a PFM image. I don't recommend this option because even though PFM is a format with a higher dynamic range than PNG, because of this increased dynamic range, the file size has increased dramatically compared to PNG. The other way to reduce the color banding caused by PNG compression, while still using the PNG format, is to add a very subtle noise layer, and by subtle I mean barely noticeable at all. If you have a smooth gradient, the PNG compression will create the aforementioned color banding. But if you introduce noise into it, the PNG compression has to include that noise as well, so it can't compress it nearly as much, meaning you'll reduce the color banding only with a trade-off of a marginal file size increase. There's a link in the description to a page on the SFM Steam Workshop with a noise texture deliberately made for this purpose. You'll need to download that for this. Once you've downloaded that, go back to Source Filmmaker and add another camera overlay, this time selecting the Material Overlay Effect option from the pop-up menu, and then clicking OK. Once you've added this and stretched it to the working area, do the same as before to open it in the Element Viewer. The section you're looking for in the element viewer is the material text box. Go back to the Steam Workshop page for the noise texture, 
and scroll down until you find the list of VMT materials. Find the one that corresponds to the resolution you're rendering at. I'm rendering at 4K, so I'm selecting the last one, 2160p.vmt. Copy that to the clipboard, go back into SFM and paste it into the material text box. You'll see the image get a little bit grainier and washed out, so to limit the level of the texture, go to Overlay Color and on the alpha slider at the bottom, move it to around between 20 to 30 or 35 or so. With that, the image is ready to render, so we're going to do that now. Go to File, Export and Movie. It's important to note that you can't use Poster to render this with this method because rendering with Poster doesn't render any of the overlay effects you put onto it, so that makes everything we've done in this tutorial kind of pointless. So. Name the output path whatever you want, select image sequence, disable the separate wave file option, and change the duration to render only one frame. Select custom from the drop down menu and type two adjacent numbers in the boxes. I usually render at the one second mark, so for this I'll type 30 and 31, so that Source Filmmaker starts rendering on the 30th frame and stops when it hits frame 31. Note that some models don't render properly with only one frame, and this usually happens because of the way their flexes are set up. For cases like this, render about 4 frames, so type 30 and 34. Now click export movie. I'll come back to you in a moment. Alright, if you've rendered everything properly, you should have an image that's been rendered out with a flat color profile. And I've also rendered out a version without the flat color profile done to it, so that we can compare it later on once we've color corrected all this. So, let's go on to that, shall we? I'm going to use Photoshop for the color correction, uh, but you could use any other editing software that allows you to change the colors and change the exposure and all that sort of thing. I'm just using Photoshop because I'm used to it and I, it's it's honestly better at this sort of thing uh, if you have it. So if you have it, good for you, use that. Now Photoshop has this nifty feature. All, it obviously has all these adjustment options here that you can change the vibrance, hue, saturation, color balance, black and white, all that sort of thing. But what we're gonna do first is, if we try and do this right now, I uh, change the hue and saturation. I'm just gonna say change the saturation to show. It's gonna hard bake that into the image. And if I want to change that later, I I can't I can't change it. It's well I, I can reverse it, but that's affected the image on a pixel level. I can't reverse that and get an exact copy of what I had before. So what we're going to do, and I'm doing that, we're we going to convert this into a smart object, which allows us to do whatever we want to this and at a flick of a button click of a button whatever we can set it back to what this looks like right now and also instead of using these options here all the um vibrance and hue and saturation all this because these are all separated options there's an option over here in our filter called camera raw filter which is very useful for this sort of thing because it's it's meant for this sort of thing but with photography right so all we can do is we can open up this and this gives us all these, all these options here that we can play with, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the um, at the histogram as well to sort of make sure we're not clipping any any points either. So what I'm going to do first, I usually turn up the vibrance to bring out the color a lot more. I don't use the saturation as much because saturation and vibrance, they do similar things, but the saturation control, you can see, is a lot more powerful. It, it brings out the color a lot more. So I only do it a little bit, at most. I'm going to recenter this. And I'm going to have a look close up at the uh, color. So we're seeing it's sort of getting a little bit too yellow there. So I'm going to play around. See, that's mainly the saturation that's doing that. So I'm going to back off that a bit. I'm going to bring up vibrance, though. So now what we can do is we can also adjust these. So I'm going to have a look. I'm going to bring down this because there's some room I can bring the dark areas down a bit. And adjust shadows as well. I'm also going to uh, turn up the exposure a bit so that we can see a bit clearly and turn up dehaze. The main power of this comes from over here, the HSL adjustment, hue saturation luminance adjustment. This is where I spend a lot of the time color correcting here because this allows me to see it has this sort of yellow tinge to it which might be what you're going for but i'm not exactly going for that i'm wanting it to be a little bit well less less yellow color so what i can do is i can especially with sunset skin color here i can make that a bit less yellow and a bit more orange as you'll see here i'm gonna pull that over there and then i can also make her hair stand out a bit more so i'm going to turn up the red a little bit in saturation and bring that make that a bit darker 
So now if I scroll out and compare with just this section, it's making her stand out a lot more from the background. Right? That's the that's the main thing I want to have happen here. Let's give it a little bit extra green. Make the orange a little bit more saturated, just a little bit. Make the yellow slightly less saturated. In the event that we can't get everything we want out of this, as powerful as this is, all, this, all these options, um, it is possible to mask this out and make it only uh, affect that certain part, but I'm not going to get into that. So what we can do is we can, let's have a look at how this is looking. I think this is looking pretty good as it is. Yeah, I'm going to settle with that. So now, because we've set that as a um, smart object, what we can do is that's applied that as an effect that's on top of that, but we can turn that off whenever we want, and we can even go back in there and edit the actual settings. See, there's the same settings we've set before, and we can adjust it to whatever we want. So I'm just going to cancel that. But down here, I want to get rid of a little bit of this blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and now we can use these other ones here, the separate ones. Vibrance. By default, this will adjust the entire thing. You'll see the entire thing being affected. But what we can do is we can set this here as a this is here, this is a mask here, and this will allow us to select only certain parts that we want affected by this effect. So I'm going to bring down the vibrance in total first, but then I'm going to invert the mask there, so nothing happens. I'm going to draw in the mask, and you'll see down there some little spots appearing. You can see it down there as I'm drawing here. This is allowing me to select exactly where I want this effect being put onto the artwork at. So now I think that's making it look a bit better. Up here what we're going to do is we're going to make the eye stand out a little bit more. So we're going to add another vibrance effect but we're going to turn up the vibrance here and then do the same thing here. Mask out this section only. Now if we compare the eyes just stand out a little bit more. I think we can leave it at that for now, for this tutorial at least. With the color correction done, if we compare to a normal render just straight from Source Filmmaker but without any of the flat color filtering we applied, there's a night and day difference. The normal render looks alright, but the one with the color correction in post just stands out in my opinion. It looks more balanced and appealing than the other one. This is the process I've used for all my recent artworks, and as I stated earlier, it isn't limited to just artworks, you can use it in animation as well to give more freedom in post for color grading and color correction. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and stay tuned for the next tutorial where I go over how I render larger resolutions in Source Filmmaker while still using image sequence. Have a good one.